Hillary Clinton, Senator, Secretary Clinton benefits from something that most federal government employees don't have, which is a team around them that can review those emails and make sure that all of the emails that relate to her official government work can be properly sent to the State Department so that they can be maintained and preserved. All right, ladies and gentlemen, isn't that comforting? Uh, Hillary has a bunch of people who can pick and choose what emails to send to the State Department. Joining us now on the Molesburg panel, Newsmax contributor, radio host of The Larry Elder Show, and author, Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours, Larry Elder, and columnist for Breitbart.com and The American Thinker, C. Edmund Wright, and his book is uh, WTF, How Karl Rove and the Establishment Lost Again. And uh, Larry... Uh, you know, this uh, we find out today after we find out yesterday that Hillary used uh, her own private personal email to, to, to conduct State Department business and only that email. Today we find out she owned the server. The server was in her home. I, I right. mean, where does it end with her? The, uh, the defense I'm hearing from Lanny Davis, one of her longtime defenders, is that the rules were not changed until after she left. That does not get us to the problem of why somebody who's the Secretary of State would use her own private emails, given this error of cyber attacks. It's outrageous. I've talked to a lot of, read a, read a lot of experts, and, and to a person, they say, this is unprecedented. Uh, it made our national security suspect. Uh, it apparently uh, gave her control over the archives, and so that she would be able to control her image if and when she needed to turn over records. But this was absolutely unprecedented and is outrageous, and I think it's going to be a huge, huge scandal. It's going to have legs. But don't worry, uh, Edmund, because uh, she, as we just heard from uh, Josh Ernest, she, uh, she has a staff that could uh, make sure we get all those emails that everybody has a right to. And you, you could bet she's going to give them to us. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Right when we get Lois Lerner's emails, too. Look, everything Larry said is correct, but I think it's even deeper than that. This is far worse than Watergate as far as the consequences might be. She was running, apparently, a shadow State Department, communications department. I mean, she's... Is she going to run to be shadow president of the United States? She's going to have to answer for this. And by the way, I don't think it's any coincidence that Martin O'Malley is making uh, you know, some news today about possibly running. I think this is, is going to you know, maybe spawn some other stories like that. But, but Steve, what do you uh, think, the, Larry? The, the, Clint, the, Clint, the Clintons are unshameable. Do you remember Sandy Berger? He goes into the National Archives and takes documents. We still believe he probably took original documents. So we really don't know the truth about 9/11 and what uh, Clinton did or didn't do. Uh, so this is this is more, more for the course. This is. This is the ick factor, which I think is going to hurt Hillary when she gets the nomination in the fall. There's a sleaze factor to the Clintons, and, and this is just one of many things that I believe are going to pop out between now and, and come the election. Yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting. And, uh, you, know, it, what, you know, what struck me, guy, right away you think Elizabeth Warren. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, you know, didn't go to ben Benjamin Netanyahu's speech. Uh, were you surprised, Larry? Um, I I'm surprised that not... That I'm surprised that anybody boycotted this speech, an important speech. Uh, President Obama said he didn't lay out anything new. If he didn't lay out anything new, then what was the problem? What's the problem in coming out and laying out the case for why I believe my country faces an existential threat against an enemy that you, in my opinion, are, ta are taking too lightly? What's wrong with that? Why did this become partisan? How did this become partisan? I just think this, is, this whole thing is just insane. And the divorce that the Democratic Party is going to have with, with, uh, with Jews in this country, I think, is going to be a very serious one because I think a lot of Jews are going to rethink their allegiance to the Democratic Party in part because of this issue. Yeah, uh, uh, J uh, um, Edmund. <laughs> well, I, 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 you know, I'm not sure Larry's correct that, that it's going to cause a big divorce because, you know, unfortunately, or you know, a lot of American Jews aren't necessarily pro-Israel. Uh, they're just right. American liberals who happen to be Jewish, and it's their liberalism that's more important. I hope I'm wrong on that. I hope Larry's correct. Um, but again, you know, Benjamin Netanyahu's one of well, the... Well, you know what, you know what Edmund, Edmund they're, 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 if you ask them, they're pro-Israel, but at the same time, they would, you know, they believe the right path is to give the Palestinians basically everything and anything they want. So that's, right, exactly. that's, that's the problem. Uh, that's yeah, the, uh, that's right. the whole problem. All right, uh, let, let, let me, uh, you know, <laughs> we, we go from Hillary to this to that to <laughs> Elizabeth Warren. It's just insane. Uh, for our, let's, let's touch very quickly on Ferguson here. Um, well, actually, we'll do that when we come back. We're going to talk about Ferguson. The uh, uh, Justice uh, Attorney General uh, announced that the Department of Justice is filing charges against the police department in Ferguson. It, it appears to me that he's using, when he was giving the press conference, some very flimsy examples 
uh, of, uh, of bias. But we'll talk about that and the fact that no charges will be brought against the uh, police officer, Darren Wilson. Uh, we're also going to touch on the fact that the Supreme Court heard the uh, arguments today on Obamacare. And I'm getting a little nervous. So it's all straight ahead as the panel returns. Don't go away. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome back the Molesburg panel, Larry Elder and C. Edmund Wright. And uh, gentlemen, uh, the Attorney General not too long ago went to the microphone and announced uh, uh, the fact that the Justice Department's bringing charges against uh, the Ferguson Police Department. I'm not going to get into what he cited. He talked about a woman who owed a parking ticket and, you know, and she paid it and they saw, thought she still owed it and she got another parking ticket. I, I, I don't know. I, there, was, there was no, like, wow. This is like, wow, what discrimination. And here's what gets me, Larry. The fact of the matter is, Ferguson is, and, and there might be examples, there might be uh, legitimate grieves, uh, grievances here. And, and that email that disparaging the president that was allegedly written by a cop uh, talking about black men, that person should be fired. But mm -hmm. Ferguson is 70% black. So because, as he pointed out at the press conference, they stop blacks 85% of the time in car stops, what is that? What does that mean? They're supposed to do 85 because it's, I mean, 70 because it's 70%? Uh, it means nothing. And I don't doubt that there are bad actors there, like there are bad doctors and bad basketball players and so forth. The fact of the matter is, uh, blacks are four times more likely to be arrested in Ferguson than a white person. Nationwide, a black person is three times more likely to be arrested than a white person. So Ferguson is 33 times higher. That's not a whole lot higher. And the question is, what, what accounts for the gap? And you can't have a meaningful discussion about arrest unless you have a meaningful discussion about, about crime. Uh, let's just take violent crime, for example, murder, which has nothing to do with race, it, where you are, Steve, in New York, 40% is white, 20% black, 20% Hispanic. However, 96% of the arrests for murder have to do with blacks and Hispanics, almost always a black and Hispanic victim. Chicago, a third, a third, and a third white, black, Hispanic. 70% of the murders are black uh, against black. So let's talk about uh, crime, and then let's talk about what is the appropriate percentage. I don't know. You tell me. Right. Edmund? Yeah, I mean, trying to trying to profile based on percentages is just as absurd as Larry mentioned. You know, I'm sure there are some neighborhoods in greater St. Louis that are part of the St. Louis Police Department statistics. I bet there's parts of St. Louis that are actually skewed more heavily than Ferguson. But, but what also interests me is today Josh Ernest is out saying that we're going, going to ban a type of AR-15 uh, bullet ammunition because we want to stand with the brave men and women of the United States Police Forces. Meanwhile, you know, Eric Holder is going after Ferguson. It, it, both sides of their mouth. Uh, and, Ed, and again, Edmund, that's another uh, example uh, of... Mayor, yeah. Mayor, Mayor Bloomberg uh, gave a speech at the Aspen Institute and asked them not to release it publicly because apparently he said that we ought to think about passing laws to prevent young black men from owning firearms for crying out loud. Yeah, yeah, and if a and if a conservative had said that, it would it would be out oh. and it would be all over the place. You could Please. you could bet that. And how about uh, f officially announcing no charges for Darren Wilson uh, because because he was a cop defending himself against a thug, basically. Hello. But Eric Holder, yeah. as we know, last week when he said no charges against George Zimmerman after three years of trying, he says the bar's too high. We should lower <laughs> the bar. I mean, it's insane. And Larry, you made you made news with that last week on this show. Yeah, so much for due process, so much for the Fifth Amendment, so much for the Fourth Amendment, <laughs> so, much for, so much for beyond, uh, guilty beyard a reasonable doubt. W whatever happened to all of it, let's lower those standards so we can nail a few more white defendants. Outrageous. Yeah. Edmund, fi final word, final word, Edmund. Uh, yeah, well, as Larry said, out with the Fourth, out with the Fifth. Quite frankly, this is an administration, including Eric Holder, that doesn't like any of the first ten. So, you know, they want to get rid of the whole Bill of Rights. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you're absolutely right. And uh, we did not have time to talk about the fact that um, the, the, the Department of Homeland Security uh, uh, guys uh, uh, approved 100,000 expanded amnesty applications just in time before the Texas judge halted the program. Um, you know, this is, this is just insane. You got 15 seconds each. Larry? Yet, yet another reason why uh, we shouldn't have caved in on stopping the executive order. He's going to try this also, I understand, with raising taxes by executive order. Outrageous. Yes. Yeah, the bullet, the bullets, the taxes, you name it. McConnell, 
you know, in the women's locker room. How about stepping up to the plate, manning up here? But they won't do it. Yeah. There you go. No, they will not do it. It is a, it is a crying shame. All right, guys, thank you both very much. See Edmund Wright and uh, Larry Elder here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Up next, you know what it is, because it's that time of the hour. It's Gimme Five, and it's coming your way if you keep it right there.